And we're back at Valley Vet with mm -hmm. Whitney Maynard Ralph. Good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you. Talking about one of our favorite subjects, which is our pets. Mm -hmm. When someone brings their pet to see you, does it help if they're prepared, if they kind of have thought about what they might want to ask you while they're here? Absolutely. We love questions. We have lots of people that come in with a list of questions, especially first time puppy owners and mm -hmm. things like that. And we love questions. Um, and we'll talk about anything you want to talk about, what kind of food to feed your pet, um, wanted behaviors, um, why we do vaccines, when we do them, um, heartworm preventive, flea preventive, you name it. No topic's really taboo when it comes to talking about your pet and educating pet owners how to take better care of their pets. Well, not only is obesity an epidemic among us humans in this area, mm -hmm. do you see a lot of overweight animals? We do, and it's hard not to treat your pets because we love them and they love treats and so mm -hmm. that's how we express our love to them a lot um, but we estimate somewhere between 60 to 80 percent of the pets that we see are overweight and we know just like in people that can lead to a lot of health problems down the road especially in mm -hmm. larger breed dogs as they get older and tend to develop arthritis and things like that and the smaller breeds it can impact their breathing so we talk lots about diets and calorie intake and exercise and things like that. And I know you're very tactful. You're not going to say, wow, that's a that's a big old cat you have there. We try. <laughs> we try. Nobody kind of wants to have things handed to them too bluntly, but every once in a while we, we will be a little blunt if it gets the point across. Yeah, you know? but you're much more likely to say, you know, I will not want to cut down on the food. Just that's true. Yep. And you know, we, we need to hear that. That's true. You know, we need to hear that. And a lot of times we find that if you talk to everybody in the house about who all is feeding the dog mm -hmm. what, that it, there really is a lot more going in that dog during the day than we realize as far as treats. I know I fed the dog, but I did too, and the dog's not gonna tell you. So right. sometimes it helps to put just a sheet of paper on the counter, tape it down there in the morning and let everybody write down every bite, keep a food journal, so to speak, for the mm -hmm. dog. And that way we know what treats the kids gave after school and who fed the pet when. And sometimes we get some revelations when we do that. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. What do you think about feeding your uh, pet table scraps? We really advise not. And we actually have a dog in the hospital today for pancreatitis. That's one thing that we'll see um, as, a, as a consequence of feeding table scraps. We had two dogs in the hospital for that last week. So as much as they love hot dog weenies and a bite of your chicken tenders and things like that, we really advise staying away from that. Mm -hmm. Some foods can be used as a healthy treat. So maybe a baby carrot if the dog's able to chew it up. My dogs love bananas, a little bite of cantaloupe, something like that, some fruit, some oyster crackers are okay, plain mm -hmm. rice cakes. So there are some people food that we can feed that can be a healthy treat for the dogs. But we definitely want to avoid anything rich or fatty, meats and cheeses. And I would think like they that. would be just as happy with the reward of a long walk. Exactly, yeah. Most are happier. If they spend time with you, they're happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me a little bit about when you know that your pet needs to come to the vet. What are some signs to look for that you think, ah, this is something that's not just going to take care of itself? Well, we, of course, if you see something that looks problematic, something swollen, there's a lump or a bump, there's drainage from an nostril, drainage from an eye, limp, mm -hmm. anything like that, for sure. If you're not sure and you're just going, I think he lays around more than he used to, or maybe he's not going up the stairs at night, when, you know, he doesn't jump on the bed like he used to. Those kind of things too, we can always look for. Some dogs are more subtle when they when they have something wrong and they don't always tell you when it's something's bothering them and that's what we're here for. Well, you know, better to, to err on the side of being too cautious. Absolutely. You know, because I'm sure you've had people bring their pets in <laughs> thinking it wasn't something all that serious Absolutely. and then maybe it, it was. Right. And yesterday, for example, we had a cat come in for a dental cleaning and they ran let us run blood work on him beforehand. And we mm -hmm. actually found out that cat was diabetic, although he wasn't to the point of showing them any signs consistent with diabetes yet. So mm -hmm. catching that early in that cat is gonna make a big difference in how we're able to manage him. So early intervention is key. We are big on screening. Uh, that's why we do a good thorough exam. That's why I recommend running blood work on senior pets, especially or if the dog or cat is just not feeling well, we'll recommend some blood work from time to time just to kind of catch things before they're a big problem. Do you find yourself counseling people on um, what they can do to get rid of unwanted behaviors like cats scratching the furniture? Definitely. Marking their territory? Definitely so. And sometimes if you look at their schedules have changed, someone moved in or out, somebody went to night shift versus day shift, things like that, sometimes you can find the root cause. Often spaying and neutering your pets will help because sometimes cats get frustrated, especially or dogs when there's someone that's putting off pheromones in the neighborhood or whatever. Um, we use a lot of pheromone diffusers and things like that, adaptal and feel away diffusers. And so those are ways you can help approach 
behavior problems without having to medicate your pets. So it doesn't always mean that they have to be medicated. And we well, talk about behavior therapy too. I think we underestimate sometimes how sensitive our pets are to changes in the home, just Definitely. as we are. Right. So no questions off bounds. There'll be no question is a stupid question. That's right? absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, okay. Whitney. Thank you so much for sharing this with all Thank of our you. viewers, people who are so interested and love our pets, and helping educate us on this. Thank you.